But yeah, that freaking worked beautifully. We got a we got a five ounce no roll sinker mold done. Hell yeah. Be casting that and some more in a few days. So in a second we'll be doing that. End of the movie's coming up soon. Maybe there'll be some fishing in there. I bet there's going to be some fishing in there. Welcome to Jersey Jim Fish. Jersey Jim here. So today I'm going to be casting a um, no roll sinker out of Bondo for my uh, catfish bag. So I'm going to be doing some catfishing in the spring. I tied up a few, not, not a whole bunch so far, a few um, drift rigs to use with uh, pyramid sinkers and no roll sinkers like I, I really like the no roll sinkers here's the progression of the no roll sinkers and if you've been watching my movies I apologize for this just skip ahead but here's what I've done so my first no roll sinker was made out of this piece of uh, red oak but apparently red oak uh, you can only get out of wood you can only get 10 or 20 good casts out of it it worked beautifully but I, I I lost all the weights and I'm on to bigger and better things now so the second one was this monstrosity it's probably 16 ounces like uh, it looks nice it works well but you need a pretty stout rod to throw that thing so this was my first Bondo uh, cast or, or mold that I made out of Bondo it's kind of kind of pretty ugly so we won't be using that one again in fact this one's gonna go back in the melting pot so then let's see what I do oh, this is the one I did next <clears throat> I wanted to do some pyramid sinkers for cat fishing and for surf fishing and that turned out pretty well I was able to cast uh, some four ounce uh, lead sinkers and two fours and a five and that movie's on my channel so that's a beautiful thing but these you have to use with the drift rigs so when you get hung up you're throwing away the drift rig the hook the you know all of it so I, I like the no roll sinker I like the principle behind it uh, and then after that one I did this one next. This is a uh, Hopkins lure. So I cast a four ounce Hopkins lure in the Bondo. Real nice to work with the Bondo. I'm understanding it more and more, which is why I feel confident to do this today. This is one of the, uh, the Hopkins lures I cast with that. Doesn't pick up a whole lot of the scale pattern, but I don't think uh, bluefish really mind one way or the other and then I, I apologize for this in advance but then I cast this a three-part mold out of Bondo it worked pretty well learned a whole lot while I was doing that that's the end product there uh, like I said if you haven't seen it these are all on my channel this was uh, you know I scratched that off my bucket list. I've done that now. It's uh, eight ounces. That's an eight ounce deep sea dick. So today, what I'm going to be doing is taking one of these store bought five ounce no roll sinkers, and that's a perfect weight for the current that I'm I'm. Uh, planning on fishing in the river for catfish this would work uh, it's a little light for the for the jetty for bluefish but maybe you know if it's not a full moon there won't be that much tide so uh, might work for down the shore um, so what I have I have this rod that fits perfectly in the uh, the diameter hole through the weight I've gone ahead and made myself a box now let's see if you can 
for seeing what I want to show you. All right, so this box that I made, I took a lot of time to make this box proper. So what I did is I drilled a hole, I measured the whole thing out so that the uh, no roll sinker will fit with uh, a little bit of room around it, not too deep. It's going to be a small mold, just just enough for one instead of the three. I was pretty, uh, I, don't, I don't know, that was uh, that was quite a task to make three of them with the loops in it. I think making one of these is not going to be too difficult if I can get the mold done. And I guaranteed I'm going to get the mold done. It's going to work. So I drilled a hole the same diameter as the the rod on each side. I lined it up and cut the the sides. You know, I just I spent a lot of time making this box, and I think it's going to work. And then I cut a slit up the side here. So the idea is that I will be able to. mix the bondo pour it in the mold while it's still very very uh non-cured i'd say damp but it's not a well yeah damp so and then i'll be able to slip this down and it'll kind of click in when it gets to this this uh this hole that i drilled so that's the idea i, I, I it's gonna work Guaranteed it's going to work. See? That's kind of kind of the idea right there. So it's going to sit in there. We'll pour the one side, and it's only going to go about halfway up. Now this, this weight, I went ahead and eliminated the, the seam and cleaned it up a little bit. That's the other weight that <clears throat> I bought. $5 for these two weights. $5, $4.99. Tree fitty. It was tree fitty for the weight. So I mean that's ridiculous. Five dollars for that. I'll be able to pour unlimited weights with a can of Bondo. That's what we're doing it with. I don't know if I mentioned that, but yeah, you clicked on the video, so I think you know that I'm making it out of Bondo. Well, I gotta go ahead and Vaseline the inside of this box. I gotta Vaseline this thing all over it and get ready to mix it up. When I got when I got all that ready to go, I'll uh, I'll get right back to you. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be great. Hell yeah. So uh, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna speed it up really quick, so you don't need to go through me talking the entire time uh, in a dry monotone voice. But we, you know, it's important here, so you got to mix up the hardener. Uh, we're going to put some of the Bondo into the thing. We're going to put the hardener in. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add a little bit more hardener to it. I was under the impression, and I haven't researched this, that the hardener would, would make it harden faster. I think it makes it harden harder. All right. And we're going to be mixing it up with a pallet knife. After it's mixed up, we're going to dump it up to about where that, that hole is that I showed you earlier, but about here on the outside. We can always go back and carve the surface away to get it where we need it. This stuff's real easy to work with. A uh, rasp or file or something like that works really well. After we pour it into this box, however, we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to vibrate it. We're going to take the Go ahead and do that. That'll bring the bubbles up. I have a uh, the other rod to poke the bubbles <clears throat> that are near where we're going to lay the weight. I have the weight all vaselined up, and I put it on a shorter rod so it's easier to deal with. Hmm. Uh, yeah, and I vaseline the the wire up to the uh, the through wire. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and add maybe like two, two and a half golf ball sized pieces to this. Enjoy this music.
worked uh, that worked pretty well. I had a void up here that I had to add some more material to. I think the the moral of this lesson is to have more stuff mixed than you need than you think you need. And you can always uh, add more, you know, mixing the, the next batch up. Worked out well and I got the color right, so I have the, the same amount of hardener in it. That's a miracle, huh? But anyway, right now I'm going to go ahead and take, uh, take um, some files and some gouges and I'm going to run the run this down to right halfway up around the entire mold and then I'm going to cut some registration holes now you could use a drill bit if you want to try this uh, just a shallow drill bit you could while it's still wet you could put a marble halfway in uh, actually three marbles or four marbles and what that allows you to do is put the the top side which we're going to be casting next or pouring next have it line up perfectly. Um, I'm going to do it with this tool here. It's called a loop. So I'm going to carve this down and then put it back in the box. Should probably pay attention to which way it went in there, but I don't think it's going to matter. And uh, I'll get right back to you in a second. But it, it worked. It looks pretty good. Like that side worked perfectly. Absolutely perfectly. That's going to be brilliant. This side got a little bit of work to do, but you know, eliminated a, a problem before the problem could get away from me. So this will be a, a success. It is quite hot right now. I can't touch the weight. So uh, ectothermic reaction is quite strong. So I might put this down for a few minutes, let it cool off, and then I'll get to that. Meanwhile. Um, <clears throat> I haven't even done an intro to this video yet, but I've been making uh, out of a popular, a couple of popular dowels. I've been making some. Uh, well, this is going to be a swim bait, another swim bait, some poppers, a few poppers here, like a pencil popper. Got them weighted with lead, so I drilled some holes in the belly cavity and then filled them with lead. I was going to put uh, brass billets in there. I don't have one here to show you, but it's a little just a piece of brass brass rod that I cut down, filed the ends on. And then this one here, I can't wait to use this one. This is, uh, I don't know what kind of lure you call it, but it kind of swims like that. The eyelet goes up here, kind of like a rattle trap in a way. But going to be working on these as well. While I have the files out, I'll file this uh, these burrs off of here. Or I'll just, you know, flick them around my kitchen. But anyway, yeah, in, a, in a second, I'll, uh, I'll have this thing carved out for you and you can see what I'm talking about with the registration holes and getting it halfway around. This is going to work. This is going to work. Alright, so we got it, uh, we got it halfway up, all the way around, including the wire. I have a void here from the from the first pour, but that's not going to matter. That's just for the wire. The wire is going to come out. Uh, the wire is uh, is mobile. Uh, it's uh, spins around. If I had two hands. I'd be able to show you that, but take my word for it, the wire is uh, independent. It's free from the from the weight. The weight, I could probably pop it out, but I want it in there, kind of firm, stuck in there so I can tamp it down. That's it. That's the Bondo lead sinker mold thus far. So I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, that stuff reeks. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, paint this with Vaseline, and then we'll we're gonna tape the box up after we put it back in. I got the box vazed up. Actually, I can put it in now. 
and then we'll just paint the top of the uh, lead sinker mold. See the wire? It is completely independent from the weight. So we'll pop this side up. I'm going to tape the box back together. And of course, I have the box, I have it in the box backwards. Yeah, it'll work. I'm going to tape the box up paint it all with Vaseline and then pour it and I'll play some of the, some, some more of that fantastic music a uh, different part of the fantastic music you enjoyed earlier so in a minute we'll be uh, pouring we'll mix it up and pour it so one thing I wanted to show you that I'm gonna be that I'm gonna do right now the slit that's up the side we gotta got to uh, control the stuff from out there so we'll just plug that hole with a piece of tape on each side there we go that good and this is no longer my good kitchen towel so I guess I can leave my hands on it now all right Enjoy the music. Alright, so they don't really matter on that side. They uh, only matter on the mold side. So I did want to mention that um, I cut the, the registration holes in that side. And I cut the registration holes with this tool, just a gouge. Uh, small gouge helped out a whole lot. And the filing this rasp or uh, wood file is brilliant for working with this stuff this stuff is so I, I carved that thing for like an hour easily an hour and uh, it's really nice to work with I, I can't stress that enough it is a, a joy to work with but I'm anyway, gonna let that cure overnight and we'll file the edges off gotta let it cure for a few days to eliminate the liquid and then cut the sprue I'll show you that next the sprue and then we'll cast it and then it'll go in the catfish bag and we'll see that in a minute oh, hello there all right so it came out of the mold I filed the uh, the sharp edges off when it's in that box whatever's poured up the side it's like a razor that's not what that's from, that's from the drill. But we are ready to unveil. And it is the following day. There we go. My lucky chisel. Okay. It kind of chowdered up that registration mark, but that won't matter. Not too bad. I have to file that little bit off of there. This should pop out. Cut 
a sprue in the sort of pouring hole. I guess it goes the other way. Huh? All right. So I'm gonna pour or cut a, a hole to pour the lead through. And we want that to be at the highest point. Like if this is sitting like this, we want it to kind of be. So when we pour the lead in, the lead will fill this void up. So another thing, when we pour it, <clears throat> we'll put a rod, you know, similar to this one, but with a, a handle on the side, kind of like a T, so we can pull it out after. And then uh, we'll cast it, and then we'll just, you know, like I pulled the, the rod out of that weight. Same thing will happen here. Nice and tight up there. That's good. Nice and tight over there. About halfway in set in that's perfect all right so what we are going to do is we're going to pull this mark around to the top all right yep. put the mold back together and i wish i had a clamp in here but i, I don't um, i have to use the fingers and you know what i'm going to Gonna just start that a little bit with the Kiridashi. This is a, a handmade item. Um, another YouTuber gave it to me. Uh, what's the name of his channel? He just started. Um, it's Dylan McCrea, I think. McCrea, M C R E A. He makes good movies. He, he makes better movies than me, even though he's only got one. He's got a better movie than me. Here we go. That was his first project there. He gave it to me. Good guy, Dylan McCrea. Right, we don't want to go too deep with that. That's just going to be the well to uh, kind of keep the, uh, the lead from spilling everywhere. Good, so I think what we want to do now is carve this in. The one side, and then we'll go ahead and uh, the whole start we'll be able to use a drill bit to to complete it. This thing is wickedly sharp. Very good uh, carving tool. A Whitlin a Whitlin tool. What oh, is right, that's probably good enough. It'll kind of help the drill bit uh, travel where we want it to go. Hopefully, that's the that's the game plan anyway. You know, I gotta knock this corner off. That'll be all right. Let's see, smaller drill bit. Maybe we'll pilot it and then we'll check the location. Maybe we do have to carve it. I'm not gonna go with the final size. Use pilot. <clears throat> oh, here we go. Make sure we're on course there, here we are. That would work. Right, one thing that I found with the bond or the uh, the lead, rather pouring the lead, is that it, uh, you know, it's liquid. Right? Duh, Jim. It flows really easy. You don't need a big uh, channel or, or sprue to, to pour it. That being said, I think the larger the diameter 
the less heat transfer there will be into the Bondo, the less likely of getting a partial cast. So I will widen that out a little bit with the larger drill bit presently. And we gotta let this uh, this mold cure for a couple days. We get a deferred gratification here. Can have one marshmallow. Uh, you know, we're gonna we're gonna not eat the marshmallow now. We're gonna we're gonna wait and have two in 15 minutes or in two days and that's it that is the mold so far hell yeah looks good so like i was saying this rod's gonna be set into one side we'll pour the pour the lead let it solidify for a few minutes pop this open and make one up it's uh just a t-handle on this you know, like a longer longer rod and then this will be sanded down so it's nice and clean it pulls out real easy you know we get a twist on the rod as well but yeah that freaking worked beautifully we got a we got a five ounce no roll sinker mold done hell yeah be casting that and some more in a few days so in a second, we'll be doing that. End of the movie's coming up soon. Maybe there'll be some fishing in there. I bet there's going to be some fishing in there. In the very near future. Probably tomorrow night after work. Down the shore. Weather's breaking finally late in March. A beauty. I can't wait. It's going to be a stellar season. Alright, boys. We are finally to the end of the no roll sinker mold uh, it's been drying for probably a week curing for a week I went ahead and bent myself up the t-bar uh, I think this is gallop so I sanded off the end here really well with some 600 or 400 grit sandpaper so what I'm going to do is just jam that in there like that and put the top mold piece on now we definitely don't want to hold this in our bare hands first time we cast it in case there's any voids like this crack here see that crack um, you know like I filed that out I know I did but I'm not taking any chances I, I like my digits how they are so I got the lead pot this is probably going to be the last time you see the, uh, the the old lead pouring pot set up as I ordered a Lee uh, proper casting pot the bottom pourer type and I got some more lead coming in the mail. The Amazonians were supposed to be here by today. Maybe it'll be here by night, but just wanted to get this one done. As the weather has finally broken and catfishing is on my agenda for the very near future. So the first pour here, it's going to like sizzle up and, and just be kind of nasty. It's going to burn off all whatever is in there that is uh, ready to burn up, I guess, is my point. So, again, not going to hold this one. That's it. See all that? That poor one is probably gone. Yeah, you see the smoke, I'm sure. That way, so we don't kick it. Alright, give that a second to cure. Clean up some of the mess. Alright, I think we're ready. Just in time for some tree surgeon noise. Perfect. Alright, so this T-bar, give it a twist and a pull, and that worked out well. I was, I was planning on having to wrestle with that a little bit. There we go.
bend the screw off of that. I should have brought a glove out with me. But Good idea to bend the sprue off, break it off when it's um, still kind of warm. It comes off. I might bit easier when it's warm and put that back in the pot. That's it. No roll, five ounce no roll sinker mold. That's uh, two dollars and fifty cents. It's three for it. Hell yeah! I'm gonna cast like probably. How you doing? I'm gonna cast probably uh, I don't know six or seven of these. They got the other ones. The drift rig's inside, and uh, I got a lot of other stuff going on inside too. Maybe when I put them in the bag, I'll show you what I got. What else is going on? Because uh, this noise really kind of sucks. I bet for viewing these purposes. But yeah, that's it. We'll cast one more. And that'll be, be pretty much the end of the movie. And also, it's a good... Oh, uh, yeah, you didn't even see that. It's a good idea to leave some liquid on top. I've been watching a lot of casting videos for my next idea. Uh, just been overthinking that I got, like, a, a problem uh, with... Uh, well, not a problem. I just got something to figure out for the next mold that I make. And leaving a reservoir on the top as the as the as the uh, the casting cures or solidifies, it'll draw more stuff in. So if you just pour it up to the top of the sprue like that piece I just dropped in there, you can get a void like that right there. See that little dip right there? That's still kind of hot. Um, which you know, it's no big deal. It's just a sinker, but. You know, if you're doing something artistic like carving a, a, a penis, <laughs> you need you need to have it right. So that's it. A beauty. Now I put more hardener in this mold than I did the previous ones, and it's not busting apart at all, which is quite awesome. You know, the the other one immediately. Actually, the last few I've made. They've immediately, um, you know, like some of some of this bondo has bust up around the edges here. A little bit of more, a little bit more hardener, and uh, I mean that looks a lot better. Like I said this is a learning experience. Plus, uh, I think I need to grab another seat clamp because this stuff gets kind of kind of hot having the lead in it. So clamping it on either side like there and there instead of in the center where the where the void is that we're pouring so when you clamp it in the center once it gets hot it flares the edges you know like this edge will go up this way this edge will go up that way on both sides so you know you probably I don't know that's just what I think is, is logical well I've enjoyed this noise way too much I think we'll go in we'll cast a few more of these go inside and toss them in the catfish bag so in a second they'll be the, the actual end of the movie so uh, I got them all cast I cleaned them up a little bit I wanted to show you this real fast so normally I, I, I tend to not fish these no roll sinkers without braid without a uh, monofilament uh, because the weights they get an oxide layer on the outside which is harder than the lead and I've always been curious if the if it does a braid the braid because braid is not very abrasion resistant so what I went ahead and did is I took uh, one of the giant no roll sinkers that I made that was going to go in the melting pot but I forgot to carry it out and I made myself a, a like basically a garrote a garrote right of braid I don't know if you can see that but and then I put this on my leg here I cut a little Two little slits there to center it and I ran it over this weight uh, 30 times before it broke so braid and no roll sinkers just as I thought not a great combination you know, like if you get a big fish you know like I'm only catching three to three to five pound uh, channel cats but eventually a bigger fish is going to come along so 
braid and no roll sinkers, no go. So that being said, the rig that we're going to tie up with the uh, with the with the monofilament rather. Uh, well, first off, we need one of our no roll sinkers, which I went ahead and filed some of the sharp bits off the ends here, and took some of the some of the warts and dingleberries off the bottom. Not that that matters; it doesn't have to look pretty. All right, so no roll sinker. You want the uh, the tapered? Uh, I picked the one that I, that I have to drill out. I got a little drop of uh, the curl from the file went into the hole. So the no roll sinker, you want the narrow end to be towards your rod tip. So if you encounter a rock or a log, it has a better chance of slipping over that. Uh, the knots that I, I'm going to use, I'm just going to put a palomar on this side, just for a uh, time, time factor here. Is it a fisherman's knot? Yeah, it's is it is it a fisherman's knot? It's it's a fisherman's knot. Is it a fisherman? It's a fisherman's knot. Yeah, it's a fisherman's knot. So go ahead and trim the tag end. Leave it a little bit long because these knots do slip, especially when your hand when your fingers are 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 powdery with lead. And you definitely want to you know lick your fingers while you're licking the knot. I don't know. That's the knot. You're not gonna be able to really see it, but. Not very good. So you should actually put a bead here, right? But the bead is outside, and the skies have opened up. I was gonna actually cast. Oh, so I found. Uh, I found this. This is the one of the original no roll sinker molds, and I found this weight that I cast. And I was gonna cast some of these, but uh, molten lead and rain don't go very well together. So I did manage to find this. I think this is uh, six or seven ounces. Never did weigh it, but it's definitely, you know, that's a five. This is a lot thinner, but six or seven ounces. So yeah, I'm glad I checked that with the with the braid and the the garrote because. That's a big deal. Like I won't, I won't fish these with braid now. Where did my piece of metal filament go? Oh, there it is. It is such a mess in here. Oh my god. I just been, I, I finished like three, three long-term projects in the last two days, and I got a lot done, and I am absolutely beat. So we're gonna tie the same snell knot that we tied for the catfish bag. We're just going to make a loop. We're going to grab this loop back here. And we're going to... Actually, we're going to grab it up there. We're going to just wrap it down the hook. Uh, oh, five, six times. My tag end's a little short. This reel actually doesn't work. I, all my other rods are outside, and I'm not going out there right now. So I've got, this is just some old monofilament that I had on on that rod that I just tied that barrel swivel to. This is a 30 pound Andy. You know, going to be losing a lot of rigs, so it's not really imperative that I have. Uh, you know, floor card, I'm fishing dirty water too, anyway. So that's a snell knot, that's a pretty small snell knot, but like I said, I'm not really going to be using this. And that is one sharp knife, this is the, the Bollock Dagger. That's one of the movies that I just finished actually. Just finished this knife two days ago. That's on my channel, this will be up, maybe, I don't know, I don't know when it's going to be up. But. You know, we'll take off like uh, 18 inches, and then we're going to go through the barrel swivel. And we're going to go through the barrel swivel with a, uh, a double cinch knot. This is a 100-pound barrel swivel, salt water. You can use these on the on the beach for, uh, you know, small stripers or bluefish or whatever. I had bluefish. You'd have to bump this leader 
Let's trace up to uh, 50. Probably at least 40. So the hook was a uh, a three octopus hook, which is a pretty decent catfish hook. And it's what I have, so definitely it's uh, what I'm going to use. So, oh, almost spilled my beer with the rod. That would have been bad. So, yeah, a bead between this knot and the no roll sinker is a, is a, it's imperative. But like I said, I'm not going outside. That's it. That's the no roll sinker set up. So we'll just get some cut bait, you know, half of a uh, white perch or bluegill or something like that. And that's the no roll sinker. I mean, that's the no roll sinker mold. That's the, the pouring of it. I did find one more thing out and I know this movie's long enough right now. So as I was pouring these, like the third to fifth one, the the lead, like the first one usually doesn't work because it draws moisture out of this mold and it winds up boiling in there. It makes like a spongy, like you just grab it with the pliers and it breaks apart, kind of like uh, bread, you know, like really spongy. Um, so the third to fifth one, I was pouring, I wound up throwing about three of them away because they were spongy, they were all spongy. And it kind of makes sense because the first one I poured, it was just drawing moisture out of the surface of the mold, the surface of the inside of the mold. So like this cavity here, drawing moisture from that. After the third, fourth one, it was drawing moisture from the whole block. Right? Another thing I did kind of discover is that a larger mass to the block will keep the temperature down I think, I mean in theory, it makes sense to me, in my mind, keep the temperature down and keep that moisture from drawing out. But I think doing small batches, you know, I cast uh, six or seven of them, uh, eight of them, and um, smaller batches, like do four at a time, switch to another mold, you know, do as many of them as you can, and then go back to this one. I think that's the way to go. But that's it, that's the, uh, the no roll sinker mold. These, 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 will go in the, these will all go in the catfish bag for the very near future. You'll be seeing these again if you tune in. And yeah, check out the Bollock Dagger movie. That's a pretty good one I got. Right now I'm uh, working on my homemade weighted plugs. This movie will definitely be out before that one. And I'm going to cut some bills for uh, the swim bait variety. And the poppers, I put them in a float tank and drilled out the lead that I had poured in there. That's going to be awesome. I can't wait to catch bluefish on that popper. That's going to be great. Soon enough, the weather has broken. Winter's over. Hell yeah, thanks again for watching. I'll see you again. Coming up. Hell yeah. You want to get a picture of me? <laughs> prostate. Why do you need two hands to give yourself a prostate exam? Dual wielding prostate. It's more fun that way. Yeah.